Tonight we're going to continue working with MVC. We're going to look at the actual code of putting together an MVC style project using Java. Here we're using Eclipse, as you can see, and we're going to go through the steps it takes to actually put together a project using MVC and going over the actual components and how we use them as we actually <clears throat> as we write that code and put the project links together so we can see how the references between the ideas of model view controller link directly to the concepts and the actual code itself. So here we are in Eclipse. First thing we want to do, of course, is create a project. So we're going to go over here into the advanced projects section. And we're going to make a new project, just like normal. When we look at the project name, we want to keep it with the idea that we are using the starting with a capital letter and no spaces, so it'll easily sync into our GitHub account, and we can have that project so we can access it via our repository and get that available. So we're going to call this Sample MVC Project. And we'll stick with the standard idea of the JRE6. Again, we want to make sure we keep this as a separate folder for the source and class files. When we're looking at the idea of MVC, we're looking at organization and keeping our code together in a nice coherent fashion. And one of the first steps on that is to keep our source code and our class code separate. And again, we already said that we're putting in our advanced projects. We go ahead and hit finish on this. Now that we've got our MVC project, the first thing we have to do is we have to go ahead and create our packages. This is where we're going to be organizing our code and keeping it so it makes sense. So we want to go ahead and right click on our project, go to new, and choose package. And with our naming convention on packages in Java, we always have them named with a lowercase with each word separated by a period rather than using a camel case notation we see with other objects. And so in this case, we're going to do sample.model. Our second package will be sample.view. And our final package will be sample.controller. As you can see, we have our three packages right here. And we want to go ahead now and start putting the pieces together that we're going to be using. So when we're looking at the actual structure of this, there's a couple things we want to make sure we hit specifically. This is a way of specifically organizing our code so we can have it so it not only does it reflect an organization so our code is actually easy to find, follow for ourselves as a user, or as a programmer, excuse me, but also so the program itself becomes very... Um, more modular and better able to be extended and built upon for other projects as you keep going. It also makes it very um, clear for the user when the information is actually being presented. There's no worries about having other people who are reading your code understand what the different parts are and how they're actually organized. And so we're going to look at these uh, different components and see what we actually have to use. Now, as we look over here in these projects, we've got a couple things we want to note really fast to start off. In our controller package, this is going to be fairly standard most of the time. We're always going to have a runner inside here as well as our controller for the app. Those two files will always be inside our controller package. Sometimes we'll have more depending on what the project itself involves. But those two will always be standard boilerplate pieces of code that the basic components in that will always be there. And we'll address those more uh, closely in just a bit. The model component is going to have a more variety to it. Again, when we're looking at the model, since this is specifically what is reflected in the real world, each project itself will have model components that belong specifically to that project rather than a generic thing that is boilerplate for a variety of uh, projects itself. But there will be some standards about this. And the fact that the model code will have um, objects we're using that we designed for this project <clears throat> that we designed for this project specifically, and we'll be using quite a lot of getters and setters as well as some basic information such as the toString method and possibly a compare to. So these objects can be used as needed throughout all of our projects that we're using with it. Finally, in our view package, when we're dealing with Java, our view is going to be fairly standard. We'll have a boilerplate piece of code for our JFrame extension class, and then our JPanel extension class will have some basic components that we'll be able to use and refer to that back and forth. So again, we have some basic structures we're going to look at. We're going to start off with a controller because that's the one we need to actually get this project running, and we'll go from there. In our controller, we're going to need to add two classes, as I said. The first class we need to have is the actual app controller, so we'll go ahead and add a new class, and we'll call this one the sample controller. Again, keeping the naming convention so that the name of the project is linked to the actual name of the components within it, and again, the name reflects both what it is and what it does. So this is the sample project, and we're dealing with the controller. We will call this the sample controller. And to make it even more specific, we'll make that the sample app controller. It inherits from objects, so we're good to go. We go ahead and hit finish on that. We also need inside our controller package a runner for this. And so we'll go ahead and go to new, go to class, and we'll make our runner. And this is going to be the sample runner. Again, keeping the naming convention so we explain what it is and what it does. It's the sample app runner. Again, its superclass is always going to be object for this. However, this one will also have the public static void main attached to it, and we'll go ahead and use that built-in version right there. And so as you can see, we have our default package right here. It has the default param args, and we're going to go ahead and take out these comments for that, for that stub. 
and we're going to say that we're going to make a sample app controller base app equals a new sample app controller and then we're going to call the base app dot start method this start method is going to be our boilerplate code we're going to always have inside our app controller object we'll have a start method where it's going to actually load up the code we need to actually start the application keep it running and have this problem actually start and go as you can see because we haven't written that method yet and we're having a red underline right now but as we continue with this code and complete it this is going to be good to go because we want to continue the idea of having code that makes sense and is documented as we go along, we're going to go ahead and write the documentation for this right now. So we'll expand that out. And I'm going to write this as unused, since we're not going to be using the arguments parameter as part of the main method. And then for the actual comment for the main itself is the main starter method or entry point. And we'll document our class as well. This file itself now is completely finished. We have our documentation for the class and for the single method with inside it. The method is complete, simply starting with that start method. Right now, as you notice, we have an X because it's not been fully completed on the other class, but this one is done, so we'll go ahead and close that. And we're in our sample app controller. Again, keeping with the idea that we want to have our code running all the way through every single time we add code. So the first thing we want to do is add the start method for this, and it's a public void method. We know it's public because we saw it inside that other class, and void because we're not using anything outside of the method, so it's not going to return anything back. And we'll call it start, open and close parens, and open and close our squiggles, save that, and as you can see right here, the error has gone inside the app controller. This app will now start, and we are good to go. We have our sample app controller, so that it will actually compile and run right now. However, the program obviously is not going to do very much. And again, keeping with our idea that we want to actually have our project be able to run and be compiled all the way through it every single step of the way, we need to switch from our controller package and go over to our view package to start being able to actually start using some pieces here and have it ready to go. So we'll switch and pause here from the controller and move to the view package and start getting that built together. In the view package, we have two standard files we'll be using all the time. The first is going to be a class that extends JFrame, the second will be a class that extends JPanel. We'll go ahead and create those right now, and then we'll start looking at how that goes together. So we over to new, we're going to go ahead and choose a new class again. And for the first one, we're going to do our JFrame. And so this is going to be our sample frame. Again, keeping with the naming convention where it's going to actually name what it is and what it does. And instead of its super class being object, we're going to change it to be JFrame. So I'll just type in JFR right here and go to Browse. And we automatically bring up with our JFrame. And we are going to then add a simple um, panel as well. So we'll go ahead on our view, right click, new, make a new class. And then this one is going to be sample panel. But for its super class will be JPanel. And so we have our sample frame and our sample panel. So looking at the sample frame right here, and the first thing that the sample frame is going to need to have is a reference to the panel that's going to be inside of that. So we'll make a private instance of that in the declaration section of code right here. And so we'll do that even before we write our constructor. And we are going to go ahead and then have our constructor. And it's a public constructor, as always. And it's called sample frame. And it's going to take a parameter of the controller. So we can have a reference passed from the controller itself to the frame and these are the frame to the panel. And we're going to uh, create this right here so we can have a reference to it. We are not going to keep a reference to the controller inside the frame itself at this time since we're not using anything with that, but we'll be passing that reference onto the panel so the panel can send information back and forth from the user via the pan um, via the controller. And so that's going to be a sample app controller. And I call it base controller. First thing we have to do obviously is import that. So we go up here, move our cursor over, it's going to import the sample app controller from our sample.controller package. Adds an import statement as we need. Go ahead and hit save as well. And inside the sample app frame, the first thing we're going to have is we're going to have a constructor call right here. We need to create our sample frame or sample panel. And so we'll say that base panel is a new sample panel. And again, we're going to pass that reference from the base controller onto the panel. And so we'll just pass that parameter directly into this constructor. And we don't need to send anything else to it. We're then going to make a private method inside here. Again, this is boilerplate code. This is code we're going to make all the time. So take a look at this and keep this in mind that we're actually going to be using the same basic framework all the way through. And so it's a private method because it's a helper method. It's a void method because it's not going to give anything back. And we're going to call this setup frame. And the setup frame method has a couple pieces that we have to do. What we need to do inside the setup frame is we need to actually do a couple things in a specific set of order because we need to actually load this information to the frame so we can use it, and then we need to make it so it's visible and it has the right size and information. So the first thing we want to do is add the panel to the frame, and we do that with a method called setContentPane. And because this class extends JFrame, that method is already built in, and so we'll just call it with a this dot. And as you can see, we'll have the autocomplete set up here, and we're going to show this down to content pane. And we're going to set the base panel as the content pane for this application. 
that specifically sets this panel as the view that we're going to see when we load this application. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the size. And you want to pick a size that's going to fit automatically. Um, that, um, we can always change this as needed. What I use for my default standard setting on my apps as we do this, I'm just going to do a 500 by 500. That gets us a, a nice sized window that we can use on just about every screen. And has a, we can obviously see the basic setup on that. And finally, our last line that we need to do is make sure that this is visible. The visibility line has to be the last line after the size and after the content pane has been set, otherwise it will render those lines invalid. So our first line we need to do is obviously set the content pane. Our last line we need to do is set the, so or set the visibility. And again, all these methods, as you can see, we've not written them ourselves, but they are all available here because we are extending the class JFrame as part of sample frame, and therefore we get access to all the built-in methods that belong to the JFrame. We can use them and make them so it does all the heavy lifting for us. And we want to obviously call that setup frame method after we've created the base panel. And so we'll just call setup frame. And again, notice that right here we have that error on the sample panel passing to the base controller. This is because we haven't created our constructor yet for our sample panel. So we'll go ahead and hit save on this and we'll go to our sample panel and make sure that works properly. So our sample panel, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a reference to our base controller. Because the sample panel is going to be passing information back and forth with the model view control relationship, we want to have a relationship specifically identified inside our code. So we're going to have a declaration for that object right in our declaration section. And so we'll have a private, and it's a sample app controller. And keeping with the naming convention, we'll call this base controller because it's the controller for the application. And we're going to create our constructor as well. It's a public constructor, and it's a sample panel. And it takes as a parameter a sample app controller, and we'll call it base controller. And so we need to obviously import the sample app controller so we can get rid of that red underline. And this will also get rid of the red underline right here inside our sample frame. So we'll do that right now. Import sample app controller. Hit save. And notice how both errors are now gone. We have a, a set of code that is completely compilable and works all the way through. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we get this reference to base controller passed from the parameter of the constructor to the actual object itself that's going to be used as a reference within the class and make sure that's doing. To do that, we do this dot using the reference to the internal object. And we're going to say the, this dot base controller and then equals base controller. As you can see by the color coding here, the base controller for the class reference is here in blue versus the parameter reference is in green. And so we are assigning the green variable into the blue variable so we have that reference is now something that is passed all the way from the beginning inside our runner when it's creating that start method. And then we go ahead and pass that all the way through to our panel. And we'll have access to this now throughout the entire application. We can send information from the user to the controller, manipulate our model pieces, and then come on right back. So we now have an application that will fully build and load. Let's go ahead and test this out. This is just going to be a quick little version. It does absolutely nothing. We're going to hit the play button, choose this as a Java application, and let this load. And we'll have a pop-up window here in just a second, a 500 by 500 window that gives us absolutely nothing. It is one of those great applications we're ready to make all the time. Wait, we didn't call the frame inside our constructor. Oh, again, we have to have that reference inside our controller itself. So we have that start method. It doesn't do anything. But the controller needs to have a reference to the actual frame. The controller owns that piece of the GUI. And so we're going to create a reference to it right here. And so we have a private sample frame object and we'll call it app frame or and again because it's right underlined because it's in a separate package so we need to import that and then inside our constructor we're um we are going to excuse me inside our start method we want to start that display up and loading so that's where we're going to start that actually of the app frame rather than inside the constructor for this we'll have it happen inside our start the constructor for our controller will take care of all of the components for the model and call any methods that need to go along with that. The start method, though, is what we start our GUI with. And so we're going to go ahead and create that app frame. Is a new sample frame. And because we're going to be passing a reference to the controller to that sample frame, we pass it a reference of this. This refers to the current app controller, aka what we're in right now. And so we're going to say that um, app frame is a new sample frame passing a reference to this, so that means that we're going to take that app controller, we're going to pay, uh, create a new object of a frame, we're going to pass it a reference to the app controller, we're going to send the information to the panel, and now we'll have the information to be able to send back and forth from the panel to the controller, and vice versa. We'll go ahead and hit play again this time, and we'll have a quick little 500 by 500 window with nothing in it. Woohoo! We have our fantastic app.
does absolutely nothing, but we have a frame right here denoted by the fact that it has the red X up here in the corner. If you're in Windows land, it'll be over here in the far right corner. And then we have a panel with absolutely nothing in it. And so right now we, we just have an app that does basically nothing, but it's up there and it's running and it's ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and we'll close this down. So we have our basic boilerplate code right here. So the next step we need to do is provide our documentation so we can have that information available for us as we use it. So we're gonna add documentation for each of these methods and the constructor. So wax star star for the method itself and setup frame sets the size, sets the content pane. Again, with our documentation, we wanna use complete sentences throughout the entire file. This is to make sure it's usable not only by us when we're actually reading the code itself and looking at our code after we've written it the first time, but also once we generate our Java documentation, this will provide a clean and clear API that we can use or other people can use if they wish to extend our project or if we wish to look at our own project later on and come back to it from a, a fresh perspective. Again, looking at our constructor, we have a sample frame object that we're going to create with a reference to that base controller, and we want to document that inside our comments right here. And so we're going to create a sample frame object with a reference, passing a reference, excuse me, for use by the sample frame. And then again, we um, say the base controller is the reference to the app controller, provided our boilerplate code. This JFrame setup right here will be similar on all the projects we'll be doing here in class. Again, the basics of it. We have our documentation with the wax star star for Java documentation throughout the entire project. We have a class that extends JFrame with the name of the class itself to refer to what the actual project we're dealing with, a data member of our sample panel, and that is a reference to the applications panel that we'll be using throughout that. We have our constructor that takes a reference to the app's controller as an object. It then creates a new panel object and passes it, that reference to the base controller, again, noting that that color matches right there, so we're seeing that we are pay, um, <clears throat> So we see that we are passing a direct reference from the app controller for the entire object all the way through. We then call our private helper method of setup frame, which sets our contents pane size and makes the frame visible. Let's add a comma right there to make it so it's proper. Again, in our setup frame, we use the set content pane method, passing a reference to the base panel. We set our size for something that makes sense for us. In this case, we're using a simple 500 by 500 screen. And then finally setting it visible. And remember, the set visible method has to be that last method called inside our helper method of setup frame. Go ahead and hit save on this, we're good to go, and our sample frame object is now done. That boilerplate code that we've just gone over is gonna be the standard for almost every single frame we create throughout this project, excuse me, every single frame we create throughout this class. Moving on to our sample panel. Now that we've actually set up some ideas for that, we wanna actually go and take a look at our actual project we've got right here. Our sample panel right here is where we're gonna be putting all of our GUI components we'll be using for that. But before we get started with that, we have to actually look at what we're gonna be using this GUI for. And so now that we've got our framework code that we're gonna be using for the actual controller and our view classes, we need to look at the actual components that we are gonna be using or the pieces we're gonna be using to design the actual project itself. So once we've got these basic framework pieces put together and set up, we now need to go and actually do some ideas that we're going to be using for the actual project itself. So let's go ahead and put that part together. We're going to restore this back to its regular size, taking a look at our sample code right here. And as you notice right here in our sample MVC project, we have that sample controller, or sample view. We've got some basic components ready to go and put together, but we need to actually think about what we're going to be doing with this project. So we need to identify what our model is, what its components will be, so we can actually use those pieces and have them be more effective. To do that, we need to actually take some time and design our project.